Hey there, this is Clay, and today um, I'm actually at uh, Cannon Beach in Oregon on the coast on a little bit of a kind of day trip. Um, but what I really want to talk to you about today is really uh, the two different types of, uh, of the no contact rule. You see, um, a lot of people don't really, really realize this, but uh, what a lot of you know, so-called gurus are teaching is called uh, what we call the passive no contact rule. And uh, this, is, this is really what a lot of people really assume no contact is about when they first come to us looking for help. Uh, they think that it's about you know, just not talking to your ex for like 30 days or that it's about uh, just trying to distract yourself for 30 days. Just you know, you know play basketball, uh, play the guitar, rock climb, all that stuff. Just, just distract yourself, keep yourself busy. And, and that somehow that's going to make the pain go away as if somehow avoiding something is going to make it go away. Um, and, and, and that's really not what, what, what our most successful clients have done during no contact. And that's the reason why we do not recommend most people use the passive no contact rule. In fact, I can't think of a single instance when I would recommend someone use the passive no contact rule. Um, you know, essentially all you're doing is just doing nothing and expecting that to save your relationship. And when you really think about it, I mean, let's be honest here, isn't the reason why your relationship didn't work out because you, know, you didn't like say I love you when you needed to, you didn't prove to your ex that you loved him or her when, when you needed to, when they needed to, to get that reassurance from you, that you weren't uh, that solid rock that they were looking to for support and, and uh, guidance through their lives when they needed that. Isn't that the reason why your relationship broke up? And it's a little bit foolish, in my opinion, to think that that, that same uh, methodology, that same strategy is going to actually save your relationship. Because to be honest with you, it's not. And the people who go through 30 days of passive no contact, somehow thinking that doing nothing, just, just not contacting their ex is somehow going to be magical in some way um, and save their relationship, uh, you know, when they reach the end of 30 days, they're so disappointed, you know, that they, 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 they pick up the phone with so much anxiety, so much dread, uh, that they're, they're still in reaction mode, they're still clinging on their ex's every word, they're still uh, spiraling out of control, really. In a sense, they've just wasted a whole month. And what we'd recommend is that you don't do that, that you actually do what we uh, are sort of the co-creators of called active no contact. And it's not about distracting yourself, uh, numbing yourself from the pain, just trying to flip the off switch on your emotions as if you could actually do that. Um, and it's not about just not picking up the phone for 30 days. Uh, the active no contact rule is about actively engaging in your emotions, actively peeling back the different layers of your emotional experience so that you can uh, really heal emotionally and so that you can have a higher emotional capacity so that when you reach out to your ex and talk to them, they'll be able to tell that it's not going to be the same old, same old. It's not going to be the status quo. It's not going to be, uh, you know, you desperately begging and pleading to get back together again. And, you know, you can tell this a lot when people have actually done active no contact or whether they're just blowing smoke up uh, Mika and, and, and my asses um, and be like, yeah, man, I'm totally ready for, for the advanced shit, man. Totally hook me up. Um, and you can tell this because the people who have just done passive no contact, you know, they'll reach out to their ex and their first conversation will be like, yeah, I, I love you. God told me to reach out to you and de declare my undying love for you. And, and, you know, it always blows up in their faces and they come back to us and they're like, well, what did I do wrong? Why, why, what should I do now? And the people who have done active no contact, you know, they have a great interaction with their ex because they're, they're more in control of their emotions. They're approaching the situation the right way. And, uh, you know, they're much more successful in the long run. Um, so, so, I mean, obviously you're free to do whatever you want to do. Uh, but because you're watching this video, uh, I'm guessing you're interested in my advice about how to get your ex back. And my advice is to do the active no contact rule, not to do the uh, so-called uh, regular no contact rule that a lot of, um, you know, alleged experts are out there uh, uh, singing the praises of. Uh, I don't proclaim to be an expert. I'm just a guy who managed to get back together with my ex and uh, I just want to help other people doing the same. So if you'd like us to help you figure out how to use the active no contact rule to help you get back together with the person that you love, head on over to relationshipinnergame.com and sign up there today. Thanks.